my faith grew stronger and stronger, and that's where you learn to rely on Him. And even those little prayers with like, Jesus, I trust in you, you take care of everything. Emily Duncan thought she had everything she hoped for in life, a home, a marriage, and two young children. So when her marriage was dissolving and she knew divorce was imminent, she was devastated. For comfort, she turned to Jesus and his church. I took time to work on myself and um, talking with therapists and you know spiritual advisors. I started to get more into um, adoration and spending time um, adoring Jesus. Duncan became more and more involved with her parish. After some time of healing and self-reflection, she felt ready for an annulment and turned to a local priest for guidance. I had made a commitment to a friend, a spiritual director, who said, you know, Emily, I'll help you through this process and I'll be there with you, but in order, the one thing I ask is if, if we do this, that no matter what the tribunal you know, what the annulment process says, that if either you are free to marry or you're free not to remarry, that, you know, you'll accept that and you'll honor that. And I said, yes, absolutely. The United States Conference of Catholic Bishops states that an annulment of marriage is a Catholic declaration of nullity. Nullity means invalid. If something in the content of the marriage, the way the church defines it, is missing, or if the ability to place the consent intellectually f with freedom and with proper will if that's missing then we start we can say yep we see indications and we'll start the process to investigate that father paul hartman has previously served as judicial vicar for the archdiocese of milwaukee for more than 20 years and has seen numerous cases for annulment when a marriage did not fit the following criteria he explains that for a Catholic marriage to be valid, it is required that the spouses are free to marry. They are capable of giving their consent to marry. They freely exchange their consent. In consenting to marry, they have the intention to marry for life, to be faithful to one another, and be open to having and raising children. They intend the good of each other, and their consent is given in the presence of two witnesses and before a properly authorized church minister. So someone comes to us saying, I want to bring some closure to this part of my life, my past, and I sincerely believe I can make the case that something was missing. And they have to make a petition. The first step, the petitioner submits written testimony about the marriage and puts together a list of people who are familiar with the marriage. Find witnesses, find people who were around at the time of the courtship and the marriage and can testify. I saw this, I saw that. I thought this, I thought that, I understood. And so it helps us build the case that something necessary for the bond of marriage to come to bear was missing. The case then goes to a judge, which is usually the bishop of the diocese. All the materials provided are then investigated, followed by the judgment. Once the decree is given and it's not going to be appealed anymore, the parties are, are free to marry. This is where, while again, I think it's a bit of a misnomer to say the marriage never happened. Well, no, there are usually pictures and there may be children and there, may, there are memories. The, the, the life event happened, but it wasn't a sacrament and the, and the bonds that the church expects are, are not there. A 2015 Pew Research study found that 43% of divorced Catholics did not seek an annulment because they did not see it as necessary or they did not want to get one. And 49% of American Catholics personally think that getting remarried after a divorce without an annulment is not a sin. Because of these alarming statistics, in 2015, Pope Francis announced sweeping revisions to the annulment process. His aim was to make annulment more accessible and to cut down wait time. For example, annulments need only one judge now instead of a two-tribunal process, and local bishops are now the principal judge for their diocese and can be assisted by others whom they choose. I would wholeheartedly do it over again. For Duncan, seeking an annulment was her way of healing and wanting to be in full communion with Christ. Going through the process of annulment um, helps us to remain in that state of grace and um, allows us to receive God worthily and to know where we stand. It's so important because you want to be modeling as a parent, you want to be modeling the faith, right? And that you're seeking out all sacraments. She thanks her spiritual advisor for helping her navigate the annulment process, which for her took 18 months. 
Now, several years later, she can say she has everything she has ever hoped for, a loving home and new marriage built on faith, plus welcoming two more beautiful children with her husband. With us both having that deep faith in God, any of those hiccups allow us to, you know, put each other first and to love the other partner and have a really good understanding of um, we're helping each other, you know, get to heaven. At the end of the day, our goal is to help get each other to heaven as well as our children. Rosal Rages, EWTN News In Depth.